ASP.NET Core 3.0 makes it really easy to host a worker service and a Windows service. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, my name is Buzzy B, and I'm here with Dave Baguette, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Windows services. Why Either are you way. a bee, Simon? Well, it turns out we're recording on Halloween, so... Even though you will not be watching this on Halloween, unless I guess we delay this for an entire year, which I mean, could. Uh, I am dressed as a bee for Halloween. I may start to lose parts of the outfit during the recording because it's really hot. <laughs> but carry on. All right. Okay, so in a previous episode, we looked at the changes that happened to the host builder and the generic, generic host within ASP.NET Core. And I kind of alluded a little bit to uh, how that makes it easy to to build worker services. So things that aren't necessarily uh, serving up or listening for HTTP requests. So what I'm going to do here is just create a new project. And I'm going to select the worker. You know what? I get lost in this new dialog. But I guess search works well. OK, so the new worker service played here. I'm going to select that. Create new worker service three. Yeah, there's so many templates now. That search is really important. Mm hmm Absolutely. Okay, so this is ASP.NET Core 3.0 worker service. Create. So as a quick recap, the changes here uh, from what we would have seen originally. Remember, everything in ASP.NET Core kind of starts out with the same same little piece here, we have the create host builder dot build dot run. And we just do a default builder, configure services, and we add a single hosted service called worker here to run in the background. So the, the difference between like a standard web application would be that we were configuring the web host here instead, um, the web host defaults. So if we look at this worker, it's just a, it inherits from background service and has an execute async method. I'm just going to build up a, a pretty contrived example here where it's going to go through and I'm going to create a new HTTP client here. Now you're creating an HTTP client, but because you're in a worker process here and because you have the advantage of all the like startup stuff that exists inside um, of ASP.NET, you could use an HTTP client factory. I, I absolutely but could, I'm just, yes. But I'm just saying that you you could in that scenario. I don't think we've actually talked about HTTP client factory, have How we? have we not talked about HTTP client factory? We should definitely factory. do an That's episode crazy. on that. That's All right, great we'll put it on the list. Okay. All right, so I have my HTTP client, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to, every second, or we'll say every three seconds, I'm going to ping a Azure function that I have here. It's just a simple function that does nothing other than send you a response based on the, the value that you passed it. So you pass in a name query, and it hmm. just returns a result. This looks suspiciously like the default function. Doesn't it? Yeah. That is exactly what it is, the default <laughs> function. So what I'm in here to do is grab the URL which I do somewhere in here. Help me out, Simon. There it is. I read the top. function URL. So this is the URL that I want to call. And I'm just going to go var response equals wait HTTP client dot get async. And it's a big long URL here with my um, code at the end, and I'm going to pass it in the name. So, and name equals, I'm just going to do date. Hmm. You have a dollar sign at the front there, or? Uh... I do have a dollar sign. Do you? something about. Oh, you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, IntelliSense is. IntelliSense is there. broken there, but that's okay. Not the point of the show. Okay, so we're just going to pass in that value, and I'm just going to copy some code here for 
grabbing that response back and we'll log it out. Okay, so I do oh, intro. Oops, it's some fast typing. Yeah, I typed that super fast. Single keystroke. Okay, so we ensure the status code, we get the response, and that's it. That's my worker service. It's just going to go and do that every three seconds. And I'm going to run it locally here just to step through that. We got a response, status code 200 OK, so that's a good thing. And there's the response that just basically echoed out the, the value that I sent it. And you can see that we are, in fact, recording this on Halloween. Okay, and to prove that this is actually calling the function, and the reason I was using functions for this in the first place is that I can go over to monitor here, click on my li live app metrics, and I should see uh, those requests coming through one every few seconds. Let's say I let this run. There's the request. It'll wait a few seconds, it calls Whoa. it again. Magic. Okay, so that's a worker service, but now we need to deploy it somewhere. And if we are, if we, there's lots of different ways that we could deploy this. It could be in a container running somewhere in the many ways that you can host a container using some kind of scheduler. Uh, or maybe we're, we're running in a, a Windows Server kind of environment and we, we might want to deploy this to a Windows service. So I would like to do that. Let's walk through the changes we need to make to this app to make that possible. First thing we need to do is add a new NuGet package. And that is called Microsoft.extensions.windows-services. So we install that NuGet package. And then there's just one change we need to make to program.cs. So right after we create the default builder here, we need to say use Windows service. That's it. Now I can build this, and it is basically ready to deploy to as a Windows service now. Uh, but to do, actually do that, we're going to need to switch over to the command line. Okay. So I'm opening a PowerShell prompt here as an administrator because we need admin rights to actually add the service. So first thing I'm going to do is let's go to this folder. And I'm going to do dot .at publish in release config. So we get a published version of this. Now I'm going to go to my bin slash release folder. And there there's a netcore app 3.0 slash publish. And this is the code that I can publish to somewhere. So in a real world scenario, I'd be copying this code somehow over to a server where, where the app is actually going to run. I'm just going to deploy it locally right from this folder. So now all I need to do is call the new service um, PowerShell command. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my ping function service. I need to give it the binary path name. That has to be the full path. Can't be a relative path there. I'm just going to, oops. Just going to copy this. Worker service 3.exe, so that's my binary path. I am going to give it a display name, function, and a description. This is all stuff that shows up in the Windows Services console. Pings a function. And that's it. We'll run that command. It says it's created it and it's stopped. So the next thing I'm going to do here is launch the services manager and go down to ping. ping. Here's my ping function. If I go to properties here, there's the path to the executable, the one that I just configured. It's currently set just to log, log on as local system. Depending on what your service is doing, you might need to set it up to, to run as a specific account that needs specific rights. So there's little more work to be done if that's the case. Um, I like to run mine as just local system account if possible, uh, just for simplicity. 
Um, but that's it. It's set to automatically start, although it didn't start initially. Uh, let's just go peek at that metrics here. There's nothing coming in currently. There's one server online. But there's no no telemetry coming through. Nobody's calling anything. If I fire this up and everything was configured properly, it should start pinging my function every three seconds. Okay, so it did start. It didn't give me any errors here. And there we go. It oh, started that. pinging my function. Whew. That is, like, for people who are old like me and have struggled with Windows services over the years, this is so much easier than how it has been in the past. It really, really is. Yeah, because it used to be... There was a library called Top Shelf, which provided a lot of this abstraction. And if you weren't using Top Shelf, it was even more complicated to, mm -hmm. to do it. But this is this is amazing. This is built in. It's long yeah, and it, everything else within this application, other than just adding that use Windows service here, is just a standard uh, ASP.NET Core app, right? It's, it uses all the configuration, logging, dependency injection that we're used to. It's just a standard ASP.NET app. We just made one little line change here to enable that functionality of deploying it to a Windows service, which is great. Yeah, it's kind of weird that like you create this as a, an ASP.NET application. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, it's like generic code. There's some naming stuff that probably needs to be addressed at some point there. But yeah, if there's well, one thing that Microsoft are good at, it is naming. So they'll sort it. They'll definitely sort that out, no question. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all i had for today simon awesome well thanks everybody for watching and uh buzz off until the next episode <laughs> bye bye <laughs>